This is it. For this call. This call is from... What? To accept, press 1. To send a voicemail, press 2. Oh, well, this is early. He's ahead of schedule. To accept... Oh, shit. You have a prepaid call. You will not be charged for this call. This call is from... Leslie Wilson. An inmate at a federal prison. This call is being recorded and is subject to monitoring. Hang up to decline the call or to accept. Dial 5 now. If you wish to block any... Hello? Hey, Wes, you're a little early. Uh, I hope I'm not too early. Uh, I mean, you, you know, you're you're ahead of our scheduled block. I've been I've been telling folks nine o'clock p.m. tonight, but if you want to start now, it's fine. Um, what do you say? I thought you said uh, eight forty-five. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Did I say eight forty-five? Because if I did, then I fucked up. You did. You did. Damn it! Oh shit! Now I feel like a bad guy. Maybe somebody will come by a little yeah. early. Well, uh, you can, um, what you can do is you can just stream it. You can just put it on. Yeah. You know, at that time. Um, you're, you're, you're pretty quiet. Well, I'm waiting for you. I mean, we, we, uh. No, I mean, your I sound, your sound, call. your volume is a little quiet. Oh, is it? I don't know. I mean, I can. Fine. Okay. Well, as long as you can hear me fine, I guess it's okay. Uh, hopefully, I can. Well, we'll have to play around with things a bit in post. Okay. I mean, you did say eight forty-five, so I mean. Yeah. Then it's my bad, dude. I fucked up. I fucked up on my announcements. I mean, that's a mistake I can't make again in the future. Um. Blah, blah, blah. Let me double check. Let me double check. Uh, eight forty-five. How much your phone call? I think it would be 845. Damn. Yeah, I did say that. Ha, 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 ha. Turn his audio up. Yeah, I know we need you to. Let me see. Can you hear me? No, you can hear me. I can't hear you anymore. Fuck. I need this thing working now. I'm going to just like, I'm just about to drop some cash on this thing. Fuck. How have you been lately? You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Hello? Technical issues. Can you hear me okay? Hello? 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 Fuck. Hello? Oh my god, dude. I hate the technology. Sometimes I hate technology. Wes. Yes, sir. Oh, there you are. Okay, here. Can you hear me better now? I can hear you just fine, yeah. Okay, I'm you've been sure. able to hear me just fine, right? Yes, of course. All right, Jesus. I can't, the thing is, I can't boost your volume up any. My, um, I, in the future, I need to get this thing lined up. So in the future, we can do this again, and it will be better. But, so uh, tonight, well, tonight. We could keep this a little shorter, I guess, you know, and then you could just, It's okay. It's okay. Let's just roll. Let's just roll. I mean, we're here. All right. I'm ready. All right. You're ready. Well, you want to run this like an interview? Of course. Okay. Whatever you have, I'm ready. Well, uh, I mean, I don't have this real Q&A thing for you. We've got some questions that we can ask. I was hoping to just hear from you what happened that night, you know, because what I see in well, the Tulsa world is pretty, pretty limited. It tells a story. Listen, these stories that they air in the newspapers, um, they're always full of hype, and they really don't give good background information, um, unless it's a really well-researched story in a, uh, a high-profile case, and that certainly was, was not the case in mine. Mm. Um, so to give you a little bit of a background of what happened that night, is basically I was in Tulsa. Uh, I had driven up there from Austin where I was living. And Paul, you know, uh, my co-defendant, he needed help with some work. And I came up there and I was actually quite disappointed in, in, in what he had because he was very vague in what he, what he said he was doing. And then he did IT work 
Mm -hmm. uh, really, what he had in mind was this robbery, right? And so I was I was very uh, reluctant to do it, but I felt obligated because he, he was pressuring me and he was guilting me into doing it. So for those couple of days, I was just driving around visiting friends. Um, in particular, I had a friend named Roxanne. Uh, that was in her last semester at the university. Roxanne K. Roxanne Keebler. No, you should. Uh, I know K. I was just asking K. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, K from. Well, her name's out there now. And, uh, <laughs> uh, right. And she. Uh, anyways, so the, that night before, I was hanging out with her. Um, and you know, we're we had friends for for a few years and everything. And, and she had mentioned that. You know, it was the beginning of the semester. She said, well, I have my furniture over at a friend's house, and I have no way of getting to my apartment, so. Let's call it from a federal prison. All right. So I said, well, you know what? I have a truck. I'll help you move it. So anyway, the next day, I was supposed to help me move furniture. Well, I was coming, uh, I, I was leaving a bar uh, in downtown, and I had a couple drinks. And uh, I, I called her. I called her four times, and she didn't answer. She was supposed to answer so I could, you know, go pick her up and help her with this. Well, she didn't answer, so I drove to Paul's house, and uh, he had these ideas, and I was really trying to get out of it, but I really couldn't find a good enough excuse, and really I wasn't, I was just completely lost, you know, mm. I, I really was not in uh, the best of, of moods, you know, really for that past year, and uh, I, I just went ahead and... Uh, you know, went forward with everything that he had planned, and it was more of like that I wanted to get it out of the way so he'd leave me alone, and you know, I could just leave. But of course, it didn't end that way. You know, um, I don't know how much detail you're wanting me to get into, but uh, of course, you know, we drove over there and did the robbery, and uh, he got caught and he folded on me. And everybody else so wait wait he, he was the one that caught how did he get left behind on the scene well he was getting very greedy inside the store um, uh, throwing things into a duffel bag mm -hmm. and I basically got fed up and said I really don't want to be here um, I'm leaving I'm, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go outside and uh, hey look you know um, our driver which was my brother mm -hmm. uh, was across the street so I said you know what um, I have these keys from one of the clerks in here and I'm just going to go get his car so we can just drive away I, I honestly did not care about money merchandise any of that I was doing it purely for him mm -hmm. and um, and really he did not appreciate that at all he has no loyalty um, uh, looking back he was you know well, only ever a, a mediocre friend at best and I was just too blind to see that so you know, there's a reason why I named my dog Paul. Yes, I suppose there is, right? I suppose there is. You know, before any of this happened, of course. Yeah, before it happened. I mean, I didn't... I, I smelled them out. Right. So that night was really rough for me because, um, well, one, I really didn't want to do it, and two, I was not thinking about the consequences. And so I ended up jail, in jail that night, and... I was literally crying all night. I couldn't sleep. It was it was completely awful. I felt like I'd let everyone down. That I was just not doing something that I would normally do. And it, I mean, of course, it still affects me today. I still find myself in here. So I mean, sometimes I still think about that night and how things could have uh, gone differently. Uh, not just that night, but in the entire year leading up to it. Um, how I ever came to be in a position to where I was so depressed and susceptible to influence. And uh, every opportunity I get to share this with people, uh, I do because I tell them, you know, listen, uh, you need to find a meaning in your life, you need to find some way to con contribute to society, uh, don't be too idle, have your goals, have your... Uh, Find, find a reason to live because if you don't, if you get down on yourself because of whatever, a breakup, a bad economy, whatever, then, you know, things can, you can crash.
crash and burn, just like I do. And those things can be relatively easily avoided just with some foresight and, and some awareness of where you are in life and where you want to go. Mm. So go- going back to the night, um, going through the article, I saw that there were, besides yourself and your brother, there was another man. He was also a skater. Correct. Uh, Corey. Uh, Corey Sullivan. Um, I didn't know him very well. Um, I knew who he was because I had worked with him briefly um, in downtown, the seasonal job in the, um, what is it called? The, the rink? The, the Arvis uh, ice rink that they set up there in mm-hmm. downtown uh, from Thanksgiving to New Year's. And I met him there. He was a young kid at the time. He was 18. I'd only met him a few times. Um, honestly, I mean, he, he's, he's here at this prison with me. Mm. And we're cordial to each other. We're not friends, but we're not enemies. I don't have anything against him. Right. Um, but we, uh, you know, we never spent time together out in the street uh, as friends. And in here, we have different social circles as well. So, I mean, he's almost just like someone on the periphery. Who roped him in? I'm sorry? How did he get roped in? You know, I'm still not 100% sure because I had only arrived to Tulsa just a few days before uh, uh, that that incident there. But uh, my brother knew him from ice skating, Mm. and I believe that he's the one that introduced him uh, to Paul and that he and Paul had been hanging out for a little while mm. before uh, that summer, uh, in 2012, um, before uh, before I, I showed up. And I saw him at Paul's house and said, okay, well, I know this guy, but I really didn't ask any questions. So to be quite honest, I, I really didn't care. Gotcha. Uh, I had a lot of other things on my mind, and I just, I, did, I wasn't even sure why I was there to begin with. I had driven up, you know, seven plus hours from Austin. Uh, for disappointment, and uh, I was just trying to find find a way out. And I had actually my girlfriend at the time was asking me, almost begging me to come back. You know, saying, "I don't even know why you're up there either. You know, what are you doing?" So it was one of those things that I could have easily found a reason to leave. I just, for some reason, I didn't. But I should have. Mm. I, I I stuck. Yeah, indecision, I mean, inaction is also a decision, yeah? It's also an action, it's a choice. Uh, you're going to have to speak up a little bit, I'm sorry. We're saying inaction is also a decision, it's a choice. You choose not to act sometimes, you hesitated, you said. Well, it's it's one of those things that uh, you don't know, I mean, if you don't know where you are in life... Let's call it from a federal prison. You don't, you don't really know what to do sometimes when a big decision comes in front of you and it shocks you so much and you just, you just bewildered. You're like, well, I mean, in, in that case, I just gave it in because, I mean, I really, I, it's really tough for me to, to say exactly why, but, but all my defenses were down. Um, I had had a pretty rough year uh, since this was in August of uh, 2012 and uh, that previous year, ever since June, July of 2011 was um, was not easy for me at all. I had uh, contracted mono, and uh, basically that left me really lethargic, and I got fired from my job because of that, mm. my first job to have college. So uh, I, I really never recovered from that until I was in county jail for three or four months at least, until the beginning of 2013. I see. This this call is almost over, right? We we don't have much time. There's one minute left. All right. Left. Of course, we can always continue this at another time. It's no problem. Of course. Um, here, there's a question question from the audience. Um, how, how many years did Paul get? Paul got 18 years and three months. He's the one that got the most time out of all four of us. Gotcha. Because he's a ringleader. Say that one more time. Because he's the ringleader. He is. He, he 
was a ringleader, yes, um, undisputably. Unfortunately, I got um, got caught up with, uh, or I want to say really caught up, but got the label of being a, a manager uh, slash organizer in, in that role as well. So there's just a few seconds left, Alex. Uh, Call me back, please. Cut it short here. Uh, it'll have to be. It'll have to be later on. We'll schedule it later. Has to be another day. All right. Shit. Well. All right. So I messed up on my announcement. Ah. <laughs> I feel so silly for that. I feel so silly. I. Right. I guess I've been a little scatterbrained because I'm doing so many things at once. I should be putting shit down in my calendar. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, it was over fast. It was over before it even began. <laughs>